Uh, companies can ban employees from wearing visible religious symbols at work, including Muslim headscarves, following a ruling from the European Court of Justice. The decision states that prohibiting political, philosophical or religious signs at work is not discriminatory if it's applied to all members of staff equally. Well, Eleanor, Eleanor Gilbert is a senior associate in employment law at Winkworth Sherwood. So, Eleanor, Amnesty has said this is going to lead to a rise in religious discrimination among employees. Is that right? I don't think it will. Um, I can see why the decision on the face of it may seem controversial, but ultimately um, employers in the UK would be very vulnerable to discrimination claims if they started banning headscarves at work unless they can objectively justify that ban, and that's quite hard to do. But in theory, though, turbans, Jewish kippers, crucifixes could all now be barred by employers if they so wish. No, the decision doesn't have that kind of impact on law in the UK at all. The decision in the ECJ um, related mainly to what's called direct discrimination, whereas um, the main type of the, the main risk of claim would be an indirect discrimination claim, which is where an employer applies a policy equally to everybody um, in order to do that. Um, and if that it adversely affects a certain religious faith, for example, they would need to objectively justify that. And oh, that's, right. the, the bar is quite high for that, so it's not as simple as it seems. So what would, if, what would an employer have to do then if they wanted to start imposing these sort of measures? Well, they'd have to have a good reason for the ban. Um, that normally it, tribunals would want to see some sort of health and safety or some sort of real practical reason, um, and not, not just, for example, the, the company's um, identity or brand. Um, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't bow to pressure from customers, for example, if they didn't want to see an employee wearing a headscarf at work. Right. I mean, British Airways fell foul of this a few years ago when they told one of their employees not to wear a, a crucifix at work, and they got into all sorts of trouble over that. I mean, presumably under this ruling, would BA be within their rights to demand that again? No, I, d I think it would change the decision that was made in the BA case. And ultimately, um, she was actually successful in the end because they did change their policy um, which allowed that kind of um, religious dress or religious symbol to be worn um, on a necklace. Um, and that showed that their policy wasn't actually necessary. But, I mean, put, could people potentially lose their job if they didn't fall in with what employers demand in terms of dress codes from now on? Th they could, um, but whether it's fair or, or lawful is another question. Um, and, it, you know, employers would still have to ensure that any policy can be objectively justified um, and it would have to be necessary and fair um, and reasonable in all the circumstances and that the bar is quite high for that and normally focuses on health and safety and practical issues such as working with heavy machinery or working in a children's nursery for example. Uh, what's, that, and what's, the, what's the employer's attitude in general here in the UK to things like this? Do you see it much in your, in your work? Well, in my experience um, dress codes um, while it's important that they are applied consistently across the board I do think employers are quite mindful that they need to be flexible when it comes to people with certain religious faiths and their requirement to wear um, headscarves mm. and uh, we don't see many of these cases in our line of work luckily. <laughs> so does that <laughs> mean that some, that some religions are more equal than others? Um, well, all religions should be treated equally um, and, and the law does provide for that.